It's not frontal. More than a singular work of architecture, this headquarters would be a symbol to the world of mainland China's permanent presence in the international banking community. In keeping with Chinese custom, the bank asked Pei's father for permission to approach his son. With his father's blessing, and to honor his father's history with the bank, Pei accepted the commission. Unfortunately, my father died a few years later, and uh, he never had an opportunity to see even the photograph of the model that I made for the bank. So that was uh, something I very, very much regret. Nestled in the foothills of the Rocky Mountain Range of Colorado, the National Center for Atmospheric Research was a total departure for Pei. And when I saw the site the first time, I said, wow, <laughs> what a site. And I became so excited by it. And I said, I've never done anything like that because all my work up until then has been in the middle of cities. And then all of a sudden confronted with this opportunity of doing something in an area as pristine and spectacular as that, I wanted that job right from the very beginning. I've seen New York with Empire State Building. But that's not this, that kind of scale compared with the Rocky Mountains. It's nothing. So then to all of a sudden be dropped into the, that particular site, and then try to create something that somehow seemed to be at home on that side. It's been difficult. Indians built under similar kind of a background and site, and their buildings are always comfortable with the land itself. They use the same rock. Also, they choose rather simple forms. The Mesa Verdes is a very good example. A huge slab of stones, big stone silos, one simple geometric volume, elemental forms. I learned that. The aim of the center was to create a scientific sanctuary in the hush of a mountain retreat. It had to provide both places for private contemplation and pathways for encounters among the scientists. Thirty years after Colorado, Pei again finds himself working with a remote mountain site. This time, he is building a retreat for art near Kyoto, Japan. On his way to the museum now under construction, Pei revisits the site of his first commission for Shinji Shumakai, a Japanese religious order. Devoted to peace and the worship of beauty found in nature and in works of art, they had asked Pei to design a bell tower for the sacred grounds of their religious sanctuary. They called it the Tower of Angels. <laughs> they saw in Pei a true master of his craft and asked him to accept another commission, the design of their new museum. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. The site for the museum was chosen for its isolated mountain setting. I remember when I was a little boy in China, I read a story about a peach blossom valley. It tells a story about a clan say about 1500 years ago from now, uh, before now, that uh, settled into a valley without people knowing it. And one day, a fisherman rowed a boat along the stream and entered into that valley by surprise. 
And right there, after, the end, after he entered the valley, he saw a new world. People were there for, I don't know, 300 years. They dressed the way they were 300 years ago, and they had the same customs and the same dresses and so on. And that is what they call Peach Blossom Valley. And the Japanese know that, just as, just as well as the Chinese. So when I, when I mentioned that story to Mrs. Koyama and Ms. Koyama, they said, ah, yes, wouldn't that be wonderful that we can get to the museum in that same way. The idea is that you should somehow feel that you're, you've just happened onto the museum. So a little bit like, uh, like Shangri-La. Pei designed the journey's long route with a suspension bridge crossing a steep ravine and tunnels cutting through mountain terrain. My conception of what this museum should be has influenced me in the choice of the site because it contains uh, oriental art and much of it is religious art. If you uh, understand Buddhism, you know that the retreat from the world is something that is quite common. Temples are usually built in areas that are totally inaccessible. Uh, you have to have great faith to get to it. go you know there were times that we almost couldn't build here this site is extremely difficult to get to and we have all kinds of regulations that we have to follow uh, because we're building on nature's preserve and we're only allowed to expose a fraction of the building what you see uh, now uh, you much most of it you will no longer see uh, later on it's all going to be underground the, the, yes the, the, the Bell towers. You hear the sound? It's a surprise and a happy one. This is my first project in Japan. Uh, I'm perhaps very, very, and maybe overly so, sensitive about their concern, their cultures, and their traditions. But I wanted very much to respect that. The Traditions are so different. I find that rather difficult for an outsider to come in, to impose something on them and say, look here, this is my style. Can't do that. I don't think they will accept it. But ultimately, there has to be a hand that is visible in all those buildings, built in diverse places.